on State of Events. Famine looms in Gaza. Hamas arrives in Cairo for peace talks. And rain returns to the Bay Area over the weekend. State of Events starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Leonardo Bolanos. And I'm Charles Bolton. Today is March 20th, 2024. First up, the EB-5 Immigrant Investor Visa Program allows foreign-born uh, foreign nationals over the age of 18 to purchase a green card to by investing $1 million into a business or real estate venture that employs a minimum of 10 people. Once the investor uh, qualifies, they obtain a conditional green card for themselves and their family members. If the investment is still viable after the two-year period, the investor uh, becomes uh, eligible for permanent uh, status and receives a naturalized uh, citizenship uh, through resi meeting residency requirements and passing a citizenship test. 80% of the visa holders come from the United Kingdom, India, China, Vietnam, Taiwan, and South Korea. The Israeli military says they will soon begin a ground offensive in Rafah, the last city where Palestinians have taken shelter. Many are starving for lack of food and resources, in the past, Israel sent countless airstrikes, killing top Hamas officials, but also costing the lives of the civilian population. President Joe Biden is against the ground offensive. The U.S. and other allies are working with Israel to allow 200 trucks per day and air delivery to Gaza. There still are efforts underway to obtain a peace deal in Gaza. Hamas arrived in Cairo for peace talks, but Israel was a no-show because Hamas did not approve a request for a list of live hostages. The negotiations have been restarted after the United States reported that Israel had agreed and approved a framework for ceasefire and hostage exchange. Last Saturday, San Francisco celebrated yet another year of St. Patrick's Day fun with a parade and get together event at the Civic Center. Our very own State of Events reporter was on the scene. Here's Alejandro Espinoza with the story. That's right, Leo, the event was nothing but fun. Guests were entertained with live music from Irish bands and enjoyed great food and drink. Saturday, San Francisco hosted a St. Patrick's Day event at the Civic Center to celebrate tradition and holiday fun. The event hosted local Irish singers, which pulled a large crowd. The event began around 2 o'clock right after the parade ended and held a large group of guests. While guests drank and ate, some of them walked around to shop and listen to music while others sat and conversated with friends and guests at the event. Everyone come out, it's good to get out, you know, after staying at home all the time, pandemic, it's just nice to get out and see everyone having a good time, you know, celebrating. Extending San Francisco's tradition enters the 173rd year and is expected to have over 10,000 people flooding downtown streets. The daytime celebration didn't stop there though. After the parade, we went to Civic Center to look at the events with live music and vendors. 
The event hosted more than 5,000 guests and boosted the city with tourism late Saturday and into the evening. Um, you know, San Francisco is such a diverse city, and so, like, you know, this is a chance to, I think, showcase, like, I think not just, like, Irish culture and, like, maybe, like, the music, but also, like, I'm seeing, like, all these different booths, so this is a chance for, like, um, I mean, different, different, like, different uh, businesses and, like, different, like, I see, like, all sorts of types of food, too, so it's, like, I, I don't think this is just, like, Irish-specific. Guests that attended the event stuck around to hang out around the grassy areas to relax with friends. I just wanted, like, I would love to get more, like, of the culture, you know? I mean, it was fun to see the, the parade, but, um, yeah, just, like, getting to see the culture itself. Here at SFSU State of Events, I'm Alejandro Spinoza. So, Alejandro. How was the overall experience for you at the St. Patrick's Day event? Yeah, it was a great turnout. A lot of guests were in attendance for the event, but the only thing that really came across everyone's mind was how much beer they would drink. Thanks, Alejandro. Coming up after the break, a... a watershed moment for both LGBTQ representation and the Biden administration. And later in the show, SF State looks for its next board of directors, so stick around. Minds can achieve anything. We make sure they get to college. Federal student aid provides more than $150 billion in grants, loans, and work-study funds to make college possible for anyone with the mind to get there. Because if given the chance, Minds will do great things. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about money for college at studentaid.gov. Many medicines used to treat colds and flu contain acetaminophen, a pain reliever and fever reducer found in hundreds of over-the-counter and prescription medicines. But taking too much or more than one medication containing acetaminophen per day can damage your liver. So always read the label and don't take acetaminophen if you drink three or more alcoholic drinks every day. To learn more, visit fda.gov slash OTC pain info. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Food and Drug Administration. Turning now to national news, President, President Joe Biden uh, ties former President Obama's record for confirming LGBTQ judges with the uh, confirmation of Melissa DeBose and Nicole Berner, uh, President Biden has approved 11 LGBTQ judges to the federal bench so far. Civil rights activists have uh, confirmed, uh, continuously called for increased uh, diversity in the bench to better represent the nation's uh, demographics. There are new, there are now 23 LGBTQ judges on, on the federal judiciary. The San Francisco State Associated Students Organization election is heating up. Reporter Samantha Sanchez has the story. 
That's right, Leo. San Francisco State is looking for its next board of directors, and there could be major implications for students. This spring, SO State is looking for its new board of directors with associated students who are responsible for being the voice of the students on campus and advocating for their needs. The board of directors are students who are elected by other students who are in positions of power in terms of they can talk to administration and deans and make real change happen on campus. So the elections commissioner, Lily Gutierrez, was able to fill us in on the election process and what the students will expect in the following months amidst the campaigns. Then I'm going to train them on how to campaign properly and then throughout the month of April they'll be campaigning, trying to let people know what the board is because a lot of students don't know. Um, and how they want to be able to make change for their respective student or for the respective student body on campus. The board of directors have implemented various changes that have been positive additions to student life, such as the Clipper Card and Student IDs, the Mischief Wellness Center, and Gator Groceries. Students were happy to learn the source of these benefits. Oh, I think that those are really good initiatives, especially like the Clipper Card. That's very yeah, that's helped me tremendously with um, navigating. San Francisco and it also helps reduce the cost which I think is very important for all students. Associate Students is an organization that hosts many student-like orgs and resources. AS organizes various programs and events throughout the semester in Cesar Chavez to bring student life together. Some are worried that this election could not be taken serious because some students would treat it like a popularity contest. And the people who are going to apply to be BOD presidents you know, these are people who want to make a change. And so, unfortunately, those things aren't necessarily very popular, right? We do. Not a lot of people know it exists, so I don't think so, just because that's the problem is that we're not, it's not a well enough known thing that happens on our campus. The BOD elections will continue its campaigns through April and learn the students' needs and wants to help secure their spots. From San Francisco, Samantha Sanchez state of events. So Samantha, are there any standing promises from the board right now that will be upheld with the next board? Right now, the current board of directors have made their legislative action directed towards issues that affect student costs on campus, such as an increase in housing payments and the parking tax in the garage. So more than likely, the next board will advocate and fight for those same issues. Thank you, Samantha. Thanks, Leo. Rain is returning this weekend. Yesterday was the first day of spring and there's still Canada snow in the Sierra Nevadas. Although it's still cold Friday, all over the Bay Area, weekend, we have seen a lot of greenery in the mountains. This is the spring bloom in effect. We also have thunderstorms near the Sierra Nevada. This Friday we have a 50% chance of rain. Saturday we can expect showers as well. In addition, we can expect low to mid 60s all over the Bay. Coming up after the break, a bipartisan legislation passed by the U.S. House for a nationwide ban of TikTok. And studies show Americans pay the most for streaming services, so don't go f far. The report on prescription drug pricing points to corporate mouth. Freedom of the press is about your right to know. It's about to be informed. Your right to access all types of information keeps us free as a nation. No, 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 no. Today, there are real threats to press freedom. Residential areas by and your right to know about the world around us. Look. Some threats are obvious, some are easy to miss, but they all put our way of life at risk. We must defend against all of these threats, no matter what kind of news is important to you. Justified putting American troops in harm's way. That's a great question. We must protect our right to know before it's too late. Understand the threats. Protectpressfreedom.org. Unlike other health concerns, mental illness is not always easy to see. D E P R. Mental illness doesn't show up on a scale. Bipolar? Sorting out a mental health concern takes professional diagnosis and treatment. Anxiety. I thought so. If you or a loved one has a mental health concern, don't go it alone. 
For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral, call 1-800-662-HELP. Learn more at samhsa.gov slash support. Welcome back to State of Events. The House passed a bipartisan legislation in an overwhelming vote Wednesday that would force the Chinese parent company of TikTok to sell the wildly popular uh, social media platform or face a ban in the United States. Daniela Harrow has the story. Last Wednesday, the House of Representatives passed a bill that could lead to the ban of TikTok nationwide. Lawmakers in support of the bill argue the worry stems from a grave threat to national security. More than 170 million of its users are American, and some believe that TikTok should be the least of lawmakers' worries. I feel like there's a lot of like bigger problems in the country that can do rather than focusing all of their time and effort on TikTok. The ban will come if TikTok does not separate from its Chinese parent company ByteDance. According to a set of national security laws, the Chinese government could demand access to TikTok user data at any moment. TikTok CEO Sho Chu responded in a TikTok calling the vote disappointing and said TikTok will remain committed to keeping user data safe from outside manipulation. We will not stop fighting and advocating for you. We will continue to do all we can, including exercising our legal rights to protect this amazing platform that we have built with you. The Senate will begin its work on that bill today, March 20th. Reporting for State of Events, I'm Daniela Haro. Netflix, Disney, Hulu, Max, if you subscribe to any of those or more, you aren't alone. According to Digital Media Trends Report, U.S. households subscribing to video streaming services spend $60 a month on average for four services. Researchers reported nearly half they would cancel their favorite subscription if prices only went up by $5 a month. I canceled my uh, Netflix account way too many times because they kept raising their prices, Charles. Uh, what about you? Hey, man, it's, not infl it's inflation, but the cost of streaming services is breaking my ice cream bank. Uh, you man, know, I can't I afford hear you. ice cream anymore. So what am I going to do? Cancel my services and read books? Uh, that's, uh, that's one option. Well, that's it. Uh, that's all we have for you this afternoon. Thanks for joining us. And don't forget to subscribe to our State of Events channel on YouTube. For State of Events, I'm Charles Bolton. And I'm Leonardo Bolanos. Have a great day.